Hi. Good afternoon. Hi. 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 <laughs> well, uh, we will start now. Um, I will continue with the presentation. Just let me. There it is. Well, welcome all to the 29th episode of the STEM Girl Spiritual Space Talk Show. Uh, we are very happy and glad to have you here. We are here today due to the efforts of the African Girls Empowerment Network. On this episode, we will have a wonderful guest, that is Dr. Esther Ongozi Odafe. Thank you so much for your participation, Doctor. Last time we had some troubles with the connection, but I am very happy to have the opportunity to ask the questions again. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, uh, please, I request all of you to keep your microphones mute so we can so we can continue with the talk show. I think some of you have the microphone uh, on. So please mute your microphone. Um, let me yes okay uh, please mute your microphone because we ha we can hear a little bit of noise uh, at the uh, at the back of the sound so uh, let me introduce myself i am gabi villa and i will be the host of the talk show this time and well to get into context before starting the event i will briefly explain what H Network does with the program of STEM girls in the area of education by reading the next introduction. Women, as we know, are no less than any men in any field. Over time, we have seen several examples of women excelling in various STEM fields and serving the society for the larger cow. We at the STEM Girls Initiative aim to groom girls with the same kind of inspiration and see that hard to excel in STEM fields and do their best. Uh, this talk show is a platform for the women in STEM to talk to the girls aspiring to excel in it. We are sure that after hearing from our guests, all the audience will be inspired to reach the stars. During this talk show, we will be conversing with a woman in the field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. A woman who has made her mark and now graciously taking the time to tell us about her journey and share with us her wisdom. And well, uh, as I said before, today we have a wonderful guest that is Dr. Esther Ngozi Odafe. Um, Dr. Esther N. Odafe is a seasoned educationist, researcher, and entrepreneur with over 20 years of academic and professional experience. She graduated from Edo State University, ECPOMA, Nigeria, with honors in BSCED Mathematics Education. She also holds an MED Mathematics Education and PhD Curriculum Studies at Mathematics Education from the University of Benin, Nigeria. Esther was founder of a school, nursery, primary, and college in Benin City, where she taught and managed the institution for several years. She has also worked with various other institutions of higher learning and private organizations, including Gandolin Research, Texas, USA, where she held the position of quality control specialist. She currently works with the University of Benin as an adjunct lecturer. Dr. Odafe has attended and presented original research papers at several international conferences. Her major research focus is in the area of curriculum mathematics, Concealing Psychology and Participation of Females in STM, Science, Technology, and Mathematics. She has several published works in leading academic journals and conference proceedings. She is a researcher in academia and a businesswoman. Hi, doctor. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hi, I, Gabby. Yeah, Sorry. Can you Hi. hear me? Uh, Hi, Gabby. Uh, nice to be uh, here. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for the opportunity. So, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you uh, uh, for joining this movement and accepting our invitation. 
in case you want to share your screen, you can do it. Just let me know. So, I stop. Is that okay? I didn't get you. Gabby, you said, please, can you come again? Ah, yes. Uh, if you want to share your screen, you can do it. Just let me know. So, I stop playing. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, perfect. Um, before we start, you can introduce yourself, Doctor. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I my discipline is in mathematics education. I finished my university, my primary, secondary, and ed um, um, university education in Nigeria. I'm from Delta State, but we've traveled different parts of the states in Nigeria. I did my diploma, my undergraduate program, my master's program, and my university program, postgraduate in master's and PhD, all in mathematics education. I'm a curriculum specialist and uh, with several publications and also a business woman. I've been in innovating mathematics laboratory in school as consultant in Nigeria over the years. That's a short summary of my activities. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here. And now, Thank you. Uh, and now so we can start formally. Um, the first thing I would like to ask you is to tell us what your team is and what got you interested. Yes, my field of study, like I earlier said, is mathematics education, with great emphasis on mathematical modeling and curriculum studies. My interest in mathematics had its roots in my uncle, that is the basic father that I knew. My biological father is not an educated person, but at a very young age, my uncle, that is my biological father's immediate younger brother, took me at a very, very young age, as I was told, at the age of three or four, as I was told by my parents. He was a technologist, working in the Nigerian communications, Nitel at then, as at that time. To him, we grew up in a home where math, it was an offense to fail mathematics. The day you fail mathematics, even in the test we had in school, you're going to, you're not going to be in his good book. He rooted his love of mathematics into me and his biological daughter, my sister. And that is where I got this poor to go into the mathematical career. Okay. Thank you so much, Doctor. Um, I think that your your field has a lot of like job opportunity, and it's very interesting. So. Pardon? Sorry, you said, can you come again, Gabby? Ah, yes, uh, that your field is very interesting. Uh, what you studied uh, has like a lot of, of, of like ways to work on it. I don't know if I am explaining myself right. Yes, there were challenges along the way. It, mathematics is a field where even the male, the male folk, um, fear to go into, not to talk of the female folk. Mathematics is not a common career in Nigeria. So at that time in my growing up years, it was very challenging going into the field of mathematics. But with the kind of father I had, that I had so much respect and awe for, you either know it or you don't know it. And that is how my interest for mathematics developed. And I, 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 I went into it and did great in it. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you so much, Doctor. 
Uh, please, everybody, uh, when I talk uh, to Mark, I think that there are some microphones open. And okay. Uh, by the way, you talk about your field, doctor. Uh, I think that you I like, like what you do. So, I do. What, does it mean, <laughs> what does it mean for you to be a woman in STEM and in your sector in particular? That's a very fine question. A woman in STEM, mm, it's a woman in STEM, it's breaking the glass ceiling, if you know what I mean. STEM, like I said, is generally not popular with women. For example, I want to give you a personal example. During my PhD and master's degree program, I had no one single cosmate, not even a male nor a female. All through my years in the master's program, all through my years in the PhD program, we're talking about whooping nine years. I had no female cosmate to interact with. Not even a male classmate in my university in the faculty to interact with. So I did my research alone. I made my mistakes alone. I learned alone, just under the supervision of my supervisor. It was very, very challenging. So my venturing into mathematics during my master's and my PhD encouraged others who we are observing to watch whether I'm going to scale through or not. But when they saw that I successfully scaled through the programs, others started going in into the program and applying to study it. Even in my undergraduate days, taking mathematics from the math department was a challenge. I was the only single female who would be in class and the teacher is teaching everybody and everybody what they were all males it was not easy it was a male dominated field it was not easy at all especially when you are taking courses like metric space topology and the lecturer the lecturer is writing on the on the marker board my god you may not even know where it's going and where it's coming it was really really challenging but several women, happy to say, several women have broken the glass ceiling to get to the top of STEM. Let me give you an example from my university here in Nigeria. The first female vice chancellor, that is the first female to be a chancellor, a vice chancellor in Nigeria today, up till today, is prof was Professor Grace Alele Williams. She was a professor for University of Benin. She was, she had a PhD in mathematics education too, and she became a professor of mathematics education. Today, her name has stayed in the time, so in, uh, at, her name is there written on the record, even in Guinness Book of Record. Others are following her footsteps beautifully. Others are, even as I'm speaking with you today, in Nigeria, the pre, the, the, another female is the vice chancellor of University of Benin. She is Professor Lilian Salami. So women in STEM are thriving and we really need this exclusiveness and inclusiveness of, we, of females in STEM because they can find their place and they can do well in STEM. Thank you so much, Doctor, you for, so the much for the report. Uh, that was very inspiring. Uh, I'd always like to hear uh, the answer of our questions because we always learn something new and we play with a new positive message. And now, as you told them, uh, STEM fields are male dominated. Uh, as UNESCO says, even though women make up the population, only 35% of higher education globally are women. And as you told us, and your Thank you for that question, Gabby. Today, According to a research carried out by a catalyst organization, Women in STEM, 
The data from that organization, from research carried out by that organization, reveals that men are 77.5% to women who are 22.5% working in STEM field as of 2016. In 2019, another research was carried out and it was revealed that only 23.6% of women, that is less than a quarter, are working in the field of natural sciences and applied sciences and science related occupation. So this data I just gave to you reveals that we have very low inclusiveness of women and females in STEM career, STEM fields and career. The reason being that mathematics and science is seen as a mystery, especially mathematics. I'm going to concentrate on my field mathematics. Mathematics is seen like a mystery, an abstract subject, a calculating subject. Now, why do I think, like you asked Gabby, that women can excel in STEM? As ladies, as women, we're all here. We are created, we have that natural, natural inherent gift to be highly organized. I'm sure I'm very correct in that. We're gifted, we're highly organized person. Look at this virtual space meeting we're having that is being managed by women, highly organized. Women are very proactive. Women are great, excellent thinkers and women are critical thinkers. You'll agree with me so that if these beautiful qualities of women are brought and annexed into the STEM field and STEM career, women are going to take STEM to the next level. That's why I encourage and I feel that women should participate more fully in STEM. When Professor Alele Williams was the Vice Chancellor of University of Benin, University of Benin had a breakthrough in terms of achievement, academics, excellence, and administrative prowess. So women can do better if they bring these their inherent natural gifted qualities into STEM. STEM will go to the next level. I assure you of that. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. What uh, are you, what the are you, you that you think that you can help that we have like fewer women in, in the STEM field? Can you please come again, Gabby? I didn't get you clearly. Yes. You know that uh, what, I uh, uh, what, was weak. Okay. Uh, what are the reasons are the reason that you think that that that, 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 that make that we don't that have like, a lot of women in the country? Yes. We don't have a lot of women in the STEM field because the women are shying away from STEM. They are. You go to the classroom, I've been opportunity to teach in the classroom. You go to the classroom and students who are offering the sciences, uh, 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 like I gave you the figure, are very minor compared to the male folk who are offering the sciences. Yes, in my country, Nigeria, at the high school level, mathematics is a compulsory subject. So they are forced to offer it as a subject in the secondary school, right from basic one to basic six. They are forced to, but that does not mean they do well in it, they excel in it or they pass it. No, they just offer it because they have to. They don't love it. They don't do well in it. They shy away once they have the opportunity to leave math, they shy away from it. Thank you so much. And following up, this question, um, how do you think that having more girls in STEM field will be like more beneficial for the society? Yes, I had achieved that in my years as a mathematics and further mathematics teacher. I was opportune, like I mentioned earlier, to teach mathematics in the university demonstration secondary school for years. Like I mentioned, as at that time, female students shied away from this subject. 
What did I do to encourage students to enjoy mathematics and especially further mathematics subjects, which in quotes, people feel is like, ah, oh, no, I can't do it. I incorporated a teaching technique that has still today been copied by the school, being implemented by the school. The, the teaching technique is known as CLS, that is Cooperative Learning Strategy. Now, I grouped students into various groups in the class, even when it was an intact class. I grouped them, and then these students are taught through self-motivation and self-discovery. Students are given projects, and because they are learning through self-motivation and self-discovery, these children, these students were happy to see themselves being able to arrive at solutions. It made them love math a lot. This strategy demystified mathematics to them. It took time, yes, because they had to work extra hours outside the formal and normal school timetable. It took time, but gradually more girls began to participate in the subject. It was so beautiful that at the end of the second year of my teaching in that school, the school recorded 100% pass for further mathematics in the external examinations in Nigeria of Waek and Neko. The principal was so happy. So that by the third year, she was just transferring me from one class to the other. Even the art class, she had to extend me to teach in the art class to help the students not only to offer math, no, but to enjoy it, to know it and to pass it. And this really, really motivated the student. They were happy. Today, if I'm working in Uniben, I see my students in various science fields, medicine, different science fields, they start to greet, they're happy because the route why they could offer this subject is because they pass mathematics excellently. Secondly, while I was a teacher, I innovated mathematics laboratory. I ensured and I wrote a proposal and gave it to the principal that please, we need to teach mathematics in a laboratory, just like her sister subject, physics and chemistry. You can't go and perform titration verbally. No, titration must be practically taught to the students. I gave her why we should teach figures, shapes, contractions in the laboratory and labor a mathematics laboratory was practically set up in the school and these students have been doing excellently since then. Perfect. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your advice. I think that you very important give a focus on education so we can motivate and inspire more girls. And now, sometimes the obstacles that a from girls are not only social, uh, like for example, discrimination, depression, stereotypes, and among others. Sometimes it could be economic. Do you know of any scholarship or support program for your students offered by your institution or any other institution relating to your field? Yes, there are. There are lots of sponsorship programs. Firstly, I am a member of an organization with the acronym OWSW, OWSDW. The full meaning is Organization for Women in Sciences for the Developing World. Now, it's not only for the developing world alone. The, the, the concentration of that organization is for developing world. You can, you can Google it and see it online. This organization assists women in sciences, even students. Now, this organization caters for women in STEM through sponsorship programs, workshops, fellowships, and conferences. Let me give you a practical example. In 2010, I was privileged to be sponsored by this organization for a, conf to a conference in China. 
with the team Women Scientists in a Changing World. Now, those of us from Nigeria, Delta State, for example, who have our origins from Delta State in Nigeria, the governor of Delta State, Asadaye, paid all expenses for us because we were women in sciences. Up till today, the Delta State of Nigeria makes sure that encourage females, especially in sciences. And till date, this organization is still sponsoring women in sciences. I published an article in that um, conference with the title, An Investigation of Female Students' Attitude to Mathematics and the Chief Determinants of Their Participation in STM Education. Now, one interesting fact is, as at this time, I was a master's and PhD candidate. I wasn't, I didn't have my PhD. So this organization assists anybody. It does not have to be those who have already excelled in their career. And what is more, in 2016, this organization saw us to a conference in Kuwait, all sponsored. So there are a lot of sponsoring opportunities. The Usman Danfodio, for example, last year, footed all expense pay costs for a student that made a first class in mathematics. So if we search, we will find. What is more, in 2013, another personal example I want to give you, Gabby. In 2013, in Bayelsa State, they organized a program under the auspices of an NGO tagged Genius Alumni in conjunction with Shell, an oil company in Nigeria, and Intel, a technological company all over the world, I was called on as to be a facilitator and a resource person to train all science and mathematics teachers in the state, all of them, including their principals and vice principals. The school, the, the state declared one week no school so that all the students, all the teachers, sorry, senior teachers, can come and learn the methodology of teaching. Now, one beautiful thing about this training was that we were a group of trainers. And in that group, I was the only female. Every other person was a male. And I trained the teachers on teaching techniques and teaching methodologies. It was all sponsored. It was free. So there are various opportunities, various sponsorship opportunities that we can find if we search it, if we search for it, if we Google it, we will find it. And we'll be able to assist ourselves in STEM learning and STEM teaching and STEM career. Thank you so much, Doctor, for that response. Uh, there are so many options, as you say, that we don't, sometimes we don't even know where to start. Uh, your advice is very valuable. And now, Talking a little bit more about your field, what are the interesting projects you have worked on that can contribute to, to solving today's problem, like, for example, malnutrition, HIV, and other diseases? That's another fine question, Gabby. Um, to answer that question, I'm going to give you another personal experience. I believe that personal experiences will help our girls to see to encourage them to know that they can excel. To answer your, this question, I want to give a personal experience, like I said. During the heat of the global pandemic that hit the world, that was that is tagged COVID-19, that is still on till today, I was that is in 2020, I was privileged to work as a quality control specialist with Gadolin Medical Research research company based in Texas, in the United States. As a remote worker, I was a remote staff. It was a breathtaking experience, Gabby, to carry out jobs across continents. I was in Nigeria and monitored from the US on what to do online. It was beautiful. And what enabled me to do that because of the aid of modern state-of-the-art technology. 
notable landmark about that job as at that time when I was a staff, that all of us that were remote staff were females. We had female doctors, medical doctors. We had female physicians. And myself, that was an academic doctor. We really tagged on well as workers, as staffs. We worked and researched on vaccines and we arrived at solutions. Technical advancement is the bedrock of sciences today. In the late 2020, a second example I want to give in answering that same question. In the late 2020, up till date, I've been privileged to work with a consortium of scientists and entrepreneurs on innovating black soldier fly larvae production technology as an alternative protein input for animal feeds to enhance nutrition and food sufficiency in developing countries. This project is being promoted by UK Innovate, and we are still in the process of seeking for funding. Notable is the fact that in this project, I'm the only female scientist, all others are males. Like I said, even when I went to Bayasa, I was the only female. Along this project, like I mentioned, I may have mentioned earlier, I'm a consultant to schools in Nigeria, and they call me here and there, and we, I help these schools in establishing mathematics laboratory in high school. So this has been my input at this time, up till date. Thank you so much, Doctor. I am sure that your skills, as you like, keep going in your career path, it, it must be getting more and more like complex, and it is very interesting. And now Thank that you. we have your coming to a single application of your skills, what job and career opportunities are there for girls, and what are the ones that are involved relating to your skills? At present, I must say this, and I really want our girls to hear, to note this. It's very important for them. At present, we are in the fourth, the fourth industrial revolution. And this fourth industrial revolution is technologically driven. There is no shortcut about that. Look at even the virtual meeting we're having now. Persons from all over the world are tuned into this meeting because of technology. So we are in the fourth revolution that is technologically driven. Repositioning oneself is a must. Imagine technologies such as artificial intelligence, drone technology, autonomous vehicles are rapidly replacing manual labor. To be relevant today, you must be a part of STEM. Our girls must be a part of STEM. Females have to reposition themselves to be part of STEM. It's non-negotiable. Even the world of arts has positioned themselves into STEM. You look at your television, you listen to CNN, you listen to Al Jazeera. They are speaking to you. The persons who are speaking to you are trained in the art field, but what are they using so that they can hear you, you can hear them? They are using technology. So most social and economic activities are now being driven by technology. For instance, like I've mentioned this online interview, future careers will be largely technologically driven. There are many, many, numerous career opportunities that girls and women can pursue in this fourth industrial revolution, Gabby. Some of these jobs that are related to e-health, e e-education, technology-enabled agriculture, e-commerce, coding, software development, drones, robotics, artificial intelligence. These are all great opportunities that our girls and women can explore. 
Thank you so much, Thank you so much for your previous response. Um, that um, sounds very that interesting. Sounds very interesting. Before. Before. And another question, and very important. Another question very important. So we can advise girls so and a way to do always the best they can. Is, was there a particular time when, when the classes were the things that you wanted to give up? There are numerous. Numerous. For example, mm -hmm. let me even give you one of the latest examples. Um, the last talk show on our STEM visual space that took place two weeks ago, I was supposed to be, I was supposed to feature with Dr. Yvonne. What happened? Network in my location, Nigeria, was fluctuated and so badly my interview was not possible. That is part of our greatest challenge in Nigeria. And we have to meet this challenge by going extra mile. A world, in a world that has become a global village due to technological maladies, our career goals and opportunities in Nigeria are sometimes thwarted. Sometimes, if not most times, it's easier and excusable to give up. But you must, you must struggle to continue. Keeping pace with technological advancement has also been a challenge. And secondly, like I earlier said, trading in a male-dominated field has been a challenge. On my career path, I've met with male chauvinists, males that are egocentric, males that feel the woman should be silent and not seen, not even heard. Keeping calm keeping sane and articulated while not distorting my goal, my focus has been its challenge. And maintaining my dignity in the male-dominated field and working with male peers has also been a challenge. But happily, I've successfully done that. So it is very important, I need to tell our female STEM girls to remember they should remember that they should not, and I mean, apostrophe, open and close, capital letter, don't. You should not, they don't have to cut corners to excel in STEM. No, I didn't. You don't cut corners. I've kept my shoulders high. I've kept my head high. I've walked with dignity, and the ladder has been moving up in my career as a person, as a female in STEM. And I know my girls will also excel. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you for so the interview. Uh, even uh, though we even have, we have, we have, have trouble the last time, we're very happy to have you here today. Have you here today. Thank you so much, Gabby. I'm and happy now, to be uh, here. And now, uh, thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, we have time for questions. Time for questions. If someone has any questions, you, you can open your microphone or, or write your question or in the chat. Write your question in the chat. Uh, Joan, want to speak? You can uh, open Joanne, your microphone. Want to speak? You can open your microphone. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. I Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I just want to say that I'd rather have colonization of colonization to serve that the woman is strong in the industry, in the industry, in the foundation of the population. Sorry, Jan. I think that was, there was like an echo to this video. Everyone, so you can ask your question again. Um, I think that now you can talk. Okay, so uh, what I was saying is not a question, it's actually a commendation. I'm proud and I'm happy to see that a woman can excel in her field. And I want to say a big congratulations to Dr. Esther for being able to be resilient in her own field. And be here to talk about it today. So it's big kudos and congratulations to the woman community of the woman world as it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Esther, you are mute. Uh, there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. 
thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you can put it in the chat box also. Uh, also, doctor, uh, I think that we now have some trouble with our connection, but we are very happy also to have you in the mentorship program. Thank you so much again, Dan, for that. Thank you so much, Gabby. I'm happy it could be better today. Thank you. So, any other questions or last comments before we can pass to the end of the talk? Uh, Tina, can you hear us? I think it's not a great point. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well. Uh, I think that there are no questions. Uh, if you have any, like, conclusion or last message to the girl doctor that you want to share with us. Okay. Uh, like uh, Elliot said, we need to encourage our females in STEM. We need to help them. We need to um, let them know that it is a path that is not as difficult as they think. We have notable examples of women that have succeeded, notable mathematicians like Katherine Johnson of NASA. She was the one that made the complex calculation that aided the uh, uh, um, um, space orbital to move in the 60s. So there are women that have really excelled in STEM there are women that are medical doctors. There are women that are nurses. There are women that are scientists, even engineers, and they are excelling. And there are various opportunities online. You can Google it. Fellowship programs for undergraduate, for postgraduate programs that you can, you can search for, you can look for. If you just type on your browser fellowship programs for undergraduate, fellowship programs for postgraduate, you'll see them. You can apply and these will be additional aid in your career pursuit in STEM. So our females should not be discouraged at all. It's not an easy road, but it is a successful road. Thank you so much, Doctor. And now, in the end of the talk show, uh, I will continue with the presentation. Here's a quote that I like a lot that shows that we must work on gender equality about education. Uh, and the quote says, uh, the word female when inserted in front of something is always with an auto surprise. Female COO, female pilot, female surgeon, as if the gender implies surprise. One day, there won't be gender they won't be woman leaders uh, they will be just leaders by Cheryl Sandberg and I hope that everybody uh, uh, like think about it because it's something very important that we see as I said before the show is hosted by African Girls Empowerment Network or H Network here, our focus area, this program is part of the initiative in the education focus area. Here is our mission with the South uh, that is to encourage and promote the education of young girls in STEM. With this, we want to inspire women and girls. And also, if you want to get involved, you can become a STEM girl, a mentor volunteer, a partner friend, a donor, and a STEM girl ambassador. Here's our social media so we can stay connected and hope everybody have a good time. We hope to see you the next time. And 
Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Have a wonderful day, and we hope to see you again with the next program. Thank you, and bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Doctor Esta. Hi, Tina. Thank you. Hi, Gabby. Thank you, too. Bye. 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 See you next time.